In this video, we're going to discuss how to select a riprap size to perform a stable design for channel walls and bottom. The reference for these equations is from the textbook by Terry W. Sturm, Open Channel Hydraulics, second edition. The ISBN number and the page numbers are listed on this slide. We're going to be doing what's called the tractive force design, tractive force method. There is another reference in the Chudgery textbook from 2008, pages 289 to 295. That particular textbook can be downloaded at no cost from the internet. Now the concept of the tractive force method is that flowing water creates shear stress on the walls and bottom of the channel. When the shear stress exceeds a certain value, the channel material will slide. Now that certain value of the shear stress is called the critical shear stress. The design philosophy is to choose the channel dimensions and the riprap size such that the maximum boundary shear stress does not exceed the critical shear stress for erosion. These will be the variables which will be used in this video. N will be Manning's N. Tau 0C is the bottom critical shear stress. Tau 0C with a W superscript will be the wall critical shear stress. D50 would be the median particle size in feet or meters. Tau 0 max would be the maximum shear stress on the bottom of the channel. Tau zero with a W superscript max is the maximum shear stress on the wall of the channel. KR is the tractive force stress ratio of wall to bottom. Theta is the side slope of the angle of the channel. And phi is the angle of repose of the riprap. Tau star C is what's called the critical dimensionless shear stress. SG will be the specific gravity of the riprap, gamma, the specific weight of the water, R sub H is equal to the hydraulic radius, S sub F is the friction slope. The predictive equations that are utilized in the tractive force method. You'll notice first there's a predictive equation for Manning's N based on D50. And then you'll notice Tau 0C, the critical shear stress, is predicted from the dimensionless critical shear stress times the specific gravity minus 1 times the specific weight of water times the D50. Then there are two equations which will allow you to calculate the actual applied shear stress to the bottom and the walls of the channel. And then there's the tractive force ratio equation, which gives you the ratio of the shear stress on the wall of the channel to the bottom of the channel. We will start by doing an example. A trapezoidal channel with a bottom width of 12 feet, a bottom slope of 0 0.006, and 2.3 to 1 side slopes carries a flow rate of 500 cubic feet per second. To minimize erosion, the channel will be lined with riprap. Rocks are available that are very angular with a diameter of 200 millimeters. Determine if the rocks are adequate. These two pages will be used. You can fill these in as you're working through this example. So the first thing would be to use figure 7 in the NCHRP report 108. If you look at figure 7, it gives you a mean stone size, which would be the D50. So you'll come up from the size of the stone that you have. So you notice here at 200 millimeters, I've drawn a vertical arrow. And then I go horizontally over to the angle repose for the riprap. And you see there's a different angle reposed based if the 
riprap is crushed rock, very angular, or very rounded. The very rounded riprap is often found in the alluvial environments along the bank of the rivers. So the rock with the 200 millimeters in diameter, very angular, and we have a channel side slope of m equals 2.3. You'll notice that phi from figure 7 came out to be 41.6 degrees. And if we want to see the angle of the side slope that we were planning to build the riprap, that would be the arc tangent of 1 over the side slope is 24 degrees. Notice that the angle that you plan to build the riprap must be less than the angle of repose. Step two is to determine the critical value of the shear stress. And that's obtained by taking tau star c, which is the dimensionless critical shear stress, multiplying by the specific gravity of the sediment minus 1, times the specific weight of the water, times d50. So in this case, the tau star c will be used as 0 0.045. Where that comes from will be discussed in the next video. And then you can see the remaining numbers have been placed in the equation. And the critical shear stress then is 3.04 pounds per foot squared. Next is to determine the tractive force ratio using the tractive force ratio equation. So you can see the case of R would be 1 minus sine squared of 24 degrees divided by the sine squared of 41.6 and that equals 0.8. I had to pause the video there for a moment. So tau 0 C on the wall, the critical shear stress on the wall is equal to tau 0 C times the tractive force ratio. So the shear stress which would be applied to the wall would be 2.43 pounds per foot squared. Now we would determine Manning's N from the empirical equation. So for Manning's N, you wind up with 0 0.0364. Then we would determine the normal depth like we have many times in this course. So for a bottom width of 12 feet, side slope of 2.3, a bottom slope of 0 0.006, and 500 cubic feet per second, that gives us a normal depth of 3.95 feet, a critical depth of 3.08 feet, and a hydraulic radius of 2.3. 62 feet. Now we would determine the maximum applied shear stress. So tau zero max, which would be on the bottom of the channel, is 1.5 times gamma times the hydraulic radius times the friction slope, which we are assuming normal depth in this case, so we will just use the bottom slope. So you can see the maximum applied shear stress on the bottom of the channel is 1.48 pounds per square foot. You can then also determine the maximum applied shear stress on the walls of the channel and doing a similar computation except you'll notice in the equation there's a 1.2 instead of a 1.5. So the maximum applied shear stress on the walls of the channel will be 1.17 pounds per square foot. Next step is to compare the maximum applied shear stress to the critical shear stress where motion will occur. So tau 0 C was equal to 3.04 pounds per foot squared and then you notice tau 0 max is 1.48 pounds per foot squared. Likewise, 
the critical shear stress on the wall is 2.43 pounds per foot squared and the maximum applied shear stress to the wall is 1.17 pounds per foot squared. So both for the bottom of the channel and the walls of the channel, the applied shear stress is less than the critical shear stress, so the rocks should not move. To get an idea of a cross section of what this would look like, you notice I have an excavation for the channel and then I have the bottom of the channel lined with a geotextile fabric. This permits water to go through but does not permit the larger soil particles to go through. And then you can see that the riprap is nicely arranged on the bottom and the walls of the channel extending a little bit over each bank so that the riprap is not exposed.